Welcome to this section of the course, which is another one of our core, core sections of calculus, and that's called Introduction to Integration, or Introduction to Integrals. I told you some time ago that there were two main themes in calculus, really in all of calculus, and uh, that's differentiation, which we've done all the way up until now, derivatives in other words, and the second one is called integration, or integrals, okay? They call it, in fact, differential and integral calculus, okay? And um, it's very, very, very important. And uh, you'll see it's, that it can be challenging in some cases. You see, when you take derivatives, I showed you some bulletproof techniques that are in the book. And basically, you, you, just, uh, you take a derivative using the techniques that we talked about. There's a chain rule. There's some other things. But essentially, in order to take a derivative, you just keep taking derivatives, going on the inside, on the inside, on the inside, multiplying everything together as you go until you finally end up with nothing else to take a derivative of. And there's some other things like the, the, the uh, uh, division rule, the multiplication rule and stuff, but really it's not, it's pretty mechanical to take a derivative. You just have to know what to do. Integration, you will see, is much more challenging. For the basic ones like we're going to talk about today, it's not going to be a big deal. I'm going to show you some of the basic rules. But as we go along, you will see that there are some integrals that you're going to shake your head at and you're going to say, how do I do that? Okay. In fact, in real life, in engineering and in physics, there are plenty of integrals that you can't even solve, period, without a computer. They're impossible to solve. So here's when you start to get into math that really becomes challenging. I'm going to do my best to explain the basics to you and, uh, so that you'll have a good foundation so that you can move along. Now, recall, in order to, to, to develop this idea of what an integral is, I'm going to kind of use an analogy from what we've already talked about, which is the derivative. Okay. Remember back at the very beginning when I said, okay, here's a function of x and it's x squared, okay? And I asked you to say, well, let's take the derivative of that, f prime of x, and you already know now that that's just 2x, okay? So when you, when you go from here to here, okay, we, we say that that's taking, I'm going to write it like this, a derivative. I'm going to write it right there, derivative when you go from there to there. And that means that that's the slope of the line tangent to the, this curve at whatever point you're interested in. Now, now what if I give you the function 2x and I ask you, what function of x would you need to arrive at such that if you take the derivative of it, you get this? In other words, how do you go backwards from here to here? That's really the question I'm asking. Okay, when you do this, this is called taking an integral. Okay, in fact, another word for an integral is an antiderivative. Okay, it truly is just the opposite of a derivative. So you already know how to go from a function to the derivative. Okay, now you're going to see a lot of problems when I give you a function and you're going to go the other way and you're going to go back to the original function and you're going to take the antiderivative or otherwise known as an integral. Okay, and you might say, well, geez, what the heck is that useful for? Who cares? Well, we're going to do some examples and, and show you why it's useful. But integrals are everywhere in engineering and physics. You, you can't go a day without seeing them. Okay. So, when you do this, okay, it's called the antiderivative. Or the integral. Okay, it's the same word, okay? So, the way you would write this in a problem is it would be the integral, which is a funny symbol, looks like kind of like an S, okay, of 2x over dx, okay? And you would say, this is taking the integral of some function, and you would say that that's equal to x squared plus a constant, c, and I'll explain why we put that there here, here in just a second. But what you have on the left is you have this funny symbol called an integral. You have something in the middle that you're taking the integral of. In this case, it's this function 2x, okay? And you're integrating over some differential variable. I know I'm using a lot of terms that don't mean anything right now, but basically it's called the differential variable dx. You know, before when we took um, dy with respect to dx, it's the same dx there. It's a very small value of x is really what it means, okay? And so you're integrating this this function with respect to x is really kind of what that means, okay? And when you do that, you arrive at, at basically at x squared plus a constant we'll talk about it in a second. And in this case, you know the answer because I already told you that the derivative of x squared is 2x, and so going backwards is real easy because you already know the answer. 
I have not told you the mechanical means to actually calculate this. We're just doing it by means of an example. Now, why is this true? Okay, why is this true? Because if I take x squared and I take the derivative of it, what I get is 2x back. So what you're trying to find when you take the integral is a function such that if you were to take that function and take the derivative of it, you get back what you started with. It's just the same thing as here. If you take the integral of this, you arrive at x squared. And this, this function, which is the answer, is a function such that if you take the derivative of it, you get back what you started with. That's the definition. That's why it's an antiderivative. Okay? So the derivative of x squared is 2x. Now looky here. The derivative of x squared plus 10, what's this equal to? Well, it's equal to 2x. What is the derivative of x squared plus 57,000? Well, again, this is a constant, so it goes away. So every time I take the derivative of this, of this function here, which we're saying kind of is the answer, I get the same thing back, 2x in all cases. So that is why when you take the integral of something um, here like this, you write it down, you know what the answer is, but you always have to add a constant to it. And this is an arbitrary constant. This means this could be 1, this could be 10, this could be 50, this could be 1,000. It doesn't matter. It could be any number. That's why I put a letter there, and it's called C. It's a constant. So the reason we write it there is to remind us that the real answer to this problem is an infinite number of answers. These are just three of the answers, and they're all equally valid because the only constraint is whatever I get on the right-hand side, I better be able to take the derivative of it and get back what's under here in the integrand, okay? So c can be any number, and so that's why we have to write it out like that. So anytime you take derivatives, like the, oh, excuse me, integrals like this, you will have a constant uh, called a constant of, of integration, 